Hi students, today we will go to second module and uh, the first topic in second module is fiber materials. We know that a fiber contains core and cladding material also there are several protective coatings also there and so for the fabrication of the optical fiber two materials with slightly different refractive indices are needed and uh, the uh, first one is the core material and uh, that is the highest refractive indice and uh, another we need is a cladding material and the refractive indices is lesser than that of the refractive indices of core and this material should be transparent of light transparent to light and it should be uh, this material should be um, operating in the range between 800 to 1600 nanometer we know that uh, the main operating window for the optical fibers are there are three operating windows one situating around 800, 900, 900 nanometer 800 to 900 nanometer and the second one is situated at 1310 uh, uh, nanometer and third one is situated at um, 1550 to 1600 nanometer and these are all the um, three windows of operations of the optical fiber and so um, once we are fabricating an optical fiber and the materials these, the materials um, we are using uh, should be transparent to light and it should operate in the range of 800 to 1600 nanometer and also the material should have a low attenuation in order to provide uh, good communication and uh, this material should have a low intrinsic and scatter uh, intrinsic losses and also uh, le lesser scattering losses uh, then only we will get the good um, signal at the output side and the material should allow the making of the long thin and flexible fibers um, and the material should be cheap and abundant and most of these requirements are met by the glasses and plastic polymers so we are using glasses and plastic polymers for the construction of the um, optical fibers and if you are going to the details of uh, glass fibers um, and we know that uh, pure silica has uniform refractive index and to change the refractive index of the um, silica dopant should be added to uh, silica and uh, so the um, fiber cannot be fabricated from uh, fiber cannot be fabricated from pure silica only so uh, in order to change the refractive index we have to add some dopants so in silica fibers both core and cladding are made up of silica and uh, for changing the refractive index we are adding dopants and dopped silica used as the core material so that its refractive index will be um, uh, high and the most common do um, uh, dopants um, uh, which is used for uh, core portion is the germanium and the germanium increases the refractive index of the silica so pure silica forms the cladding that means if we are going for a silica fiber um, its core has a higher refractive index and we should make the core uh, having a higher refractive index in order to increase the um, refractive index we are adding uh, germanium dopant and which increases the um, refractive index of pure silica and uh, so the core has a germanium doped uh, silica and the cladding will be pure silica and also there are other dopants such as fluorine and that but that reduces the refractive index of the silica so they can form the cladding on the pure silica core that means if we are using the pure silica as the core then cladding should have a refractive index which is less than that of pure silica so we are adding fluorine to pure silica in order to make the cladding okay so the refractive index of the cladding will be reduced and another material used for optical fiber fabrication is plastic and different dopants are used in the fabrication process usually you see we are using glass fibers more and but there are plastic fibers are there but you know that plastic fibers will undergo large attenuation uh, attenuation so, so we are mainly using the plastic fibers uh, for short uh, distance communication and the different dopants used in the fabrication process um, uh, process are heavy metal fluorides uh, that includes the zirconium and beryllium fluoride uh, and uh, chalcogenide classes are also using that uses arsenic or sulfur and uh, crystalline materials uh, such as uh, silver bromide and silver chloride etc are uh, also used in the fabrication process uh, and uh, um, below um, a table is shown uh, and it uh, gives the core and cladding material uh, see uh, if you are uh, using pure silica that is SiO2 silicon dioxide uh, as a core material then um, the cladding should should have a uh, lesser refractive indices or we are adding um, dopants to uh, the pure silica and here the dopant used is B2O3 um, and that will reduce the um, refractive index of cladding material and if you are using germanium oxide GeO2 um, SiO2 that means uh, the dopant G, uh, germanium is added to uh, pure silica so its uh, refractive index will increase uh, 
in that case we can use uh, pure silica as a cladding material because its refractive index is lesser than that of GeO2 SiO2 and uh, in the third case we are using P2O5 um, SiO2 as a core material uh, phosphorus uh, is dropped, um, dropped uh, into pure silica so its refractive index will be increasing in that case also we can use pure silica as a cladding material so SiO2 is used, uh, used as cladding material and uh, there are different glass fibers and uh, in, in the case of glass fibers and you see usually glass composed of pure silica and uh, this pure silica is referred as uh, silica glass or fused silica or vitreous silica and the glass is made by fusing mixtures of metal oxides, sulfates or selenides and the dopants which increase the refractive index are added to pure silica to make the core and the dopants that decrease the refractive index are added to pure silica to make the cladding we know that the core refractive index should be higher than that of the cladding so when we if you are using core um, dopants to the core uh, the, the dopants should be should increase the refractive index of the core and if you are using dopants to the cladding then that dopant sh should decrease the refractive index of SiO2 okay pure silica okay next is uh, halide glass fibers at longer wavelength we know that absorption losses by silica is high and the materials that are transparent in this range are uh, zirconium fluoride and barium fluoride and with some other components added to form the glass commode and fluoride glasses belong to the family of uh, halide glasses and next is chalcogenide glass fibers and chalcogenide glass fibers contains arsenic germanium phosphorus sulfur sulfur selenium or um, tellurium um, uh, and these are used as dopants and in the case of active glass fibers um, when the rare earth elements are incorporated into normally passive glass it results into the um, materials having new optical and magnetic properties and usually in the case of active glass fibers we are um, commonly used dopants are erbium and neodymium erbium and neodymium Next is the plastic optical fibers. Usually, plastic optical fibers are used for short haul communication, that is, the distance is in the range of 100 meter. And some compounds used in plastic fibers are a polystyrene core, methyl, methacrylate cladding. And an other set is a polymethyl, methacrylate core, and a copolymer cladding. This is all about plastic fibers. In the case of plastic fibers, attenuation and scattering losses are high. So, we are not preferring that plastic fiber for long haul communication. Next, we will go to the fabrication of fibers and there are different techniques for, for the fabrication of fiber and the main steps are preform generation technique and a double crucible technique and figure shows the pre, uh, fabrication of fiber steps and in that uh, glass deposition will take place in the first step and if you preform fabrication um, is in the second step and the third step is preform drawing. Um, uh, drawing so that we will get optical fiber this is the major blocks in the case of fabrication of fibers and uh, we will go to the details and we know that various stages in the fabrication of four glass fibers are shown in the figure and figure uh, shows that uh, first stage produces a pure glass and it is then converted into the required glass composition for the core cladding structure and that is called the preform and the preform has the same structure as that of the final fiber fiber and the fiber is drawn from the preform at the correct diameter maintaining the same refractive index profile and we will go to the setup for this complete complete structure in the last slide next preform actually preform is a cylinder of silica material and its diameter is in the range of 10 to 25 millimeter and its length varies from 60 to 120 centimeter and preform consists of a core surrounded by a cladding with a desired refractive index profile and the techniques used for preform prepa preparation are various techniques are outside vapor deposition technique which is called OVD and that is also called outside vapor phase oxidation that is OVPO and second is modified chemical vapor deposition MCVD third one is vapor phase axial deposition VPAD and fourth is plasma chemical vapor deposition. And first we will go to the first technique of preform generation that is outside vapor deposition OVD or outside vapor phase oxidation and actually it is uh, asked for a university question for 10 mark so you should study it um, correctly um, completely sorry completely and so we can go to the details outside vapor deposition or OVD and first we will go to the basic chemical reactions in that and in this two gases that is SiCl4 and oxygen are mixed at a high temperature to produce silicon dioxide SiO2 and it is uh, given in the first equation that is 
first chemical equation that is SiCl4 plus O2 gives SiO2 plus 2Cl2 that is dry oxidation there is no presence of uh, water vapors okay and then silicon dioxide or pure silica is obtained in the form of small particles called the soot actually I am giving an overview first and then we will go to the detailed block diagram okay silicon dioxide or pure silica is obtained in the form of a small particles that is white particles that is called a soot and there will be a target road and that on the target road or tube a homogeneous transparent cladding material is formed by depositing the silica soot and we can add dopants to change the refractive index and the process of transforming soot into a homogeneous glass by melting by heating without melting is called sintering so sintering is the process by which we are converting the soot into a homogeneous glass and here heating is taking place but there is no melting and the soot for core material is made by mixing three gases that is SiCl4, GeCl4 and O2 through flame hydrolysis or chemical vapor deposition we are not going to the details of we are not going to the details of flame hydrolysis or chemical vapor deposition because we are not interested in that we only need uh, outside vapor deposition process and the various chemical reaction taking place during this um, preform formation are uh, uh, GeCl4 plus O2 gives GeO2 plus 2Cl2 that is also dry oxidation and uh, and uh, and this uh, this will increase the refractive index we know that germanium um, increases the refractive index so we can use it for uh, this material for uh, uh, core dopant and uh, also SiCl4 plus 2H2 um, gives SiO2 plus 4HCl that is uh, silica and that is uh, obtained in the presence of water vapor so that is wet oxidization also we are using GeCl4 plus 2H2 that will give GeO2 plus 4HCl these are the uh, main uh, reactions takes place in this case okay and next is a schematic diagram of OVD technique and this shows that you can see basic arrangement for the deposition and the collection of the target road is uh, shown in the figure and uh, here uh, there is a target road or mandrel and uh, you can see that uh, glass or silica materials are deposited on this um, road and uh, and that uh, glass materials is provided through the burner and in the burner fuel gas H2 and CH4 are um, given and also metal halides plus oxygen is given to the um, burner you can see that uh, the chemical reactions is here here metal halides and oxygen are reacted also um, silicon uh, SiCl4 and uh, H2 are also reacted and these reactions takes place um, in the burner in order to provide uh, glass particles and that glass particles uh, will deposited onto the um, target road or mandrel and uh, when we are removing that target road we will get the um, uh, uh, we will get the um, uh, section like this that is central hole after removing the target road and again it will be go to sintering furnace and we will get the, Mm, preform uh, like this clear glass in the form of clear glass and we will go to the steps uh, details in the next slide the, uh, that is explanation for this uh, mm, schematic diagram of OVD technique and uh, first uh, what happens is that uh, silica suit is deposited on the surface of the rotating target road and uh, from a burner moving along the target road usually uh, the uh, rotating road is granite or ceramic mandrel and we can see in the figure that is silica particle that is glass particle that is SiO2. SiO2 uh, is deposited on the road. That road is ma made up of um, that is road is made up of ceramic mandrel or granite, and, uh, and that will be rotating. The target road will be rotating, and so that uh, uniform deposition takes place um, uh, from the burner. Okay. And SiCl4 and GeCl4 along with the fuel gas such as hydrogen or methane is supplied to the burner and which is moved back and forth along the rotating road so as to deposit a suit layer by layer on the target road and also uh, there will be a carrier gas along with the chemical vapors that is supplied through a standard bubble delivery system which is shown in the figure and we have uh, we, we know that here the burner uh, will be supplied with the fuel gas such as hydrogen and methane and also metal halides will be given uh, to the burner and along with that there will be another setup that is not shown in this figure that is uh, shown in the next figure that is carrier gas is um, given along with the chemical vapors and that is through the standard bubble delivery system which is shown in the figure you can see the uh, see here and uh, that is the bubble delivery system and this its output will be given to the uh, burner you can see uh, and the bubbler is fitted with a mass flow controller to monitor the flow of the carrier gas 
and the carrier uh, gas is made of bubble uh, made to bubble through the liquid in the container for vaporizing some of the chemicals and the mixture of the carrier gas and the desired chemical vapors is then allowed to flow to the deposition burner see here you can see that mass flow uh, controller is there that is mfc and uh, that will monitor the flow of the carrier gas and this carrier gas is passed, passed uh, through the sacl4 gcl4 and pocl3 so we, that that are bubbled through it so it will mix with uh, the vapors and it will give um, uh, it will be given to the burner and so burner uh, will provide carrier gas also the methane uh, gas and also the uh, and also the uh, other halides and the uh, as a result this suit or um, uh, as a result uh, the glass particles will be deposited into the um, rotating road and this suit adheres to the target road to perform porous glass preform and the supply of the constant material halides is controlled during the deposition process as to create pre-decided thickness of the preform with the desired refractory index difference in different layers both si and gi fibers can be fabricated by this method for making gi fibers supply of dopant metal halides is made to vary during the growth of sooth layer so by this method we can fabricate uh, step index fiber and graded index fiber in the case of graded index fiber we have to change the refractory index um, and there is a provision uh, for changing the refractory index uh, by uh, controlling the uh, supply of the uh, uh, supply of the uh, furnace okay so after the deposition process completed the target road is removed and the porous preform is vitrified in a furnace at a high temperature that is above uh, 1400 degrees celsius and it is purged with a drying gas for lowering the hydroxyl content, content if uh, there is any presence of hydroxyl content so there will um, be attenuation okay so vitrified preform is transformed into a clear glass preform which is then mounted in a fiber drawing tower to draw the fiber from a preform melt and we will um, discuss the uh, block diagram of the fiber drawing tower in the next slide and when the cindered um, preform is heated to melting point the central hole collapses during the fiber drawing process so central hole sometimes lead to trapping of air bubbles during fiber drawing processes so cindering um, of light takes place uh, so scattering of light takes place in, in uh, such type of fibers and uh, actually this is the fiber drawing apparatus uh, actually uh, this is not needed uh, in, in the case but i am uh, giving uh, this that is fiber drawing apparatus contains a precision feed mechanism and also it contains a clamp preform and a drawing furnace bare fiber fiber thickness monitor elastic coating applicator and coated fiber and take up drum is there you can see that fibers are made from the preform and it is um, then converted into um, optical um, fiber and uh, by using this setup and the preform is precision fed into a circular um, uh, heater called the drawing furnace um, and uh, here the preform and is softened to the point uh, where it can be uh, drawn into a very thin filament and which be, uh, then becomes a optical fiber and the, uh, the turning there is a uh, take up drum and it will um, uh, turn uh, with a high speed and the turning speed of the take up drum um, at the bottom of the um, draw tower determines how fast the fiber is drawn and uh, this uh, then uh, will determine the thickness of the fiber um, so that the precise rotation rate must be um, maintained in the case of turning, uh, turning drum uh, take up drum an optical fiber thickness monitor also used in the um, feedback loop for this speed regulation to protect the bare glass fiber um, from external contaminants um, such as dust and water vapor an elastic coating is supplied to the fiber immediately after um, it is drawn and this is a setup for fiber drawing apparatus after um, the preform is ready then it will goes to um, these all steps then only we will get uh, correct um, uh, fibers okay this is all about uh, this session